Welcome to the Gen Explainers podcast, The Perfect Song. Uh, and today we have a song proffered by none other than Alan as a candidate for The Perfect Song. So let me uh, throw it over to him. Okay. So the song that we will be talking about today is Decepticon by La Tigra. Uh, La Tigra is a trio and they... Uh, include Kathleen Hanna, who was also uh, a member of Bikini Kill, so came from that kind of punk background, and uh, Joanna Fateman and Sadie Benning initially, but then later J.D. Sampson replaced Sadie. And this is the first track off of their first album. And the reason I picked this song, uh, in addition to me loving it, just in general, it when i first played the first track on that first album i felt like my mind expanded a bit like my idea of what punk could be expanded a bit it's it 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 was sort of like a reimagined version of punk where they are integrating like there's like 60s hand claps in there and there's, I don't know if that, what well, I don't know much about instruments. So, uh, but just the sound of it, like it sounds like there's um, maybe an organ, there's a guitar, there's, it's just a, a, a mishmash of like recorded, uh, uh, what, what would you call it? Uh, the part where they say, uh, how are you? Fine, thank you. It's like samples. Samples. Yeah. Anyway, I love this song, and a lot of people don't much care for Kathleen Hanna's voice, and she has a very specific voice, um, but I I do. I love it. It's perfect for what she, uh, for what they are, are doing, which is it's a very uh, feminist uh, band. And it's very DIY. They are sort of against the, the notion of expertise. They're like, look, we're just going to play these instruments. And no, we're not necessarily good at them, but we're, we're going to express ourselves. The song itself was written as a, this is a diss track, actually. Um, she and the lead singer of No FX, which is a punk band that I, I, I don't know their music, but uh, they got into something. And so No FX recorded a song that said something mean about uh, Kathleen Hanna. And so this was a, a response. And really, it's a song about how insipid their lyrics are. And even includes the line, your lyrics are dumb like a linoleum floor. <laughs> which is a reference to a, a no FX song called linoleum, uh, which I did not listen to because burn it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> sick burn, man. <laughs> uh, I didn't listen to it because the lyrics apparently are boring. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that's, that is Decepticon. Who else would like to talk about Decepticon? Um, okay. I can. Sure. Go um, I, I like the song a lot. Um, I I had heard it before because um, I have the album and uh, really liked the song. I, I what I like so much about La Tigre in general is um, they they remind me of a lot of the bands that were some of my favorites growing up. Um, also, their their roots for like you know something like Devo roots and something like B fifty twos and even though I wasn't a Yoko Ono fan. I think there's some roots there, like some of the stuff she did too. Um, and I, and I like uh, how they incorporate that and have it like a throwback sound, but also make it very current or new sounding for the time that they came out. And it also led to me exploring other bands like, 
Alex Lederkinney and a few others that really kind of fit in that same mold for me. They're not they're not the same band or the same sound necessarily, but they fit in the same kind of mold. And I like that a lot. And how, yeah, I think Alan, you were saying like they 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 just have these things. They're not necessarily great at playing the instruments or anything, but they want to express themselves in a very artistic way, and it works really well. And it's a fun song. Mm-hmm. It it on on uh, it works on many levels. Uh, I had to look up all the lyrics because I of course I couldn't necessarily make them out when I listened to it. But um, I think that it just uh, for this is the kind of stuff that I could listen to over and over and over again very easily. Oh yeah. And it's just it's just um I I, I did learn a term, electroclash um was the okay. genre that 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 apparently they helped usher in. Um and I didn't know I didn't I hadn't heard that term until I was uh, doing the podcast. I had it's just what that they it's a term that refers to the beginnings of that of the movement they were in. Electroclash genre, I guess is what they call it. But anyway, but I think yeah, I I'm a big fan of uh, Kathleen Hanna's voice. I I love her voice. So it's um one of those things where it it it's punk, kind of that renegade ish kind of sound. It's 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 just she seems to not care, but puts a lot into it. That shows she does care, but it just feels like I'm gonna explode in a controlled way. It's 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 really interesting. I like how she does it. I, I agree. I think I, I love uh, I love her voice. I think it's perfect, perfect for what they're doing. Perfect for this sort of punk attitude for a new a new time and using new production techniques to sort of you know because their influences are varied. Their influences are punk, but I'm sure their influences were also you know informed by uh, uh, things that you know like sampling, like. Um, and the in the way it was produced, it's like these sort of layers and chunks of things that are coming in and out. It's sort of staccato, if that's the right word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, but it's still the the same, you know, punk attitude and the message of the song falls right in line, and her delivery of the lyrics fall right in line to it. It all fits together, and uh, and again, listenability. It's just it's it's kind of a fun punky song. And, and and everything's kind of produced and compressed into this sort of fuzzy and 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 powerful package. It's not an airy song. It's a concise, punchy song. And it is like a punch in the gut, you know. And the lyrics are actually quite hilarious. They're really good. They're really, you know, fun and funny. And um, I don't know. More crackers, please. More crackers, please. I don't know. <laughs> I love it. Um, and again, I mentioned, yeah, the production and the instruments kind of dropping in and out and being very distinct. I love that kind of structure and mm-hmm. um, yeah, great buzzy bass and the driving drums. It's really, it's really enjoyable. And uh, I had actually, I had a question I wanted to see what Alan thought. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the research while well, for the song that I did um, said, and maybe I get this wrong, but she said, it said that perhaps she was even commenting on this riot girl movement that was earlier. Right. Yeah. Um, and that maybe she was a little bit critical also of that in a way in the song. I don't know. I may have read it wrong, but, but I'm interested to know, uh, the connection there, Kathleen Hanna, particularly how she, maybe you feel like she fits in with that movement. And I know you're a big Sleater Kinney fan too. I don't know that whole idea. We should do a show on Riot Girl movement, but that's another show. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's a de- definite connection. I feel like for me anyway, Bikini Kill kind of started uh, Riot Girl uh, as a kind of offshoot or genre of punk, I guess. Uh, so, but whether it's a comment on Riot Girl, that I don't, I mean, I never saw that in the song or I never heard that in the song. So right. that's, uh, I and I think I even saw a reference to that when I was re- researching the song too. And I just kind of went, oh, that doesn't make sense to me. Maybe it, was, maybe it wasn't specific to the song. Maybe it was specific to, the mish quote mission of the Tigre or something. I don't know. But yeah, I, I yeah. just wanted to ask about that. Yeah. But it's interesting. Yeah. You, like you said, Bikini Kill was the forefront of that. And they call it a movement. Media especially loves to create these terms for things. Yeah. So exactly. they can contextualize everything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we buy into it because it's easy to, you know, it's easy to understand things, I guess. But, um, 
<laughs> we anyway, all want to just understand. Yeah, that's all. And be, you know, commodify it. I, I did I did like this line from a review of this song. Um, it says, La Tigre aimed a candy-crusted torpedo straight at the listeners' pleasure centers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they did. And you know what? Direct hit. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of their songs, I think, in general, are about nonconformity um, and having doing your own thing. And I, I find that through a lot of their sound and their and their lyrics. I, I will just build on what Matt was saying earlier, and in a way, what Mike just said. Uh, the lyrics in La Tigre songs are fantastic, and they're very pointed at times, and they're very direct, and and they should be, and they are, and I love it. Yeah, and you know, I'm a gasoline gut with a Vaseline mind, but you know. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing much more. I mean, I talked about the production, how I liked how the instruments come in and out, how they're how they're affected. Uh, the stereo separation is great, you know, and they use the samples, like you mentioned, um, you know, sparing, but but quite effective and fun. You know, how are you? You know, mm-hmm. fine. Thank you. Fine. Thank you. <laughs> we hope you're enjoying this Gen Explainers podcast. Remember to find us and follow us on social media. Give us a like, a follow or support us on Patreon. And we'd much appreciate a five star rating on the podcast platform of your choice. Now, let's get back to the show. So, okay, well, I think uh, if there's nothing more to say, let's let's ask that big question. Is it a perfect song? Hey, Al, what do you think? I think it's a perfect song. I nominated it, and I love it, and I think it is uh, powerful. It's a powerful song to me. I just recently saw them in Los Angeles, and they close with this song, and when – they have kind of like this weird, interesting opening to the song to like segue into the song. We kind of don't know what's going on at first. And they're just kind of like walking around the stage in this weird kind of pattern. And then you get this inkling like, oh, wait a minute. And then it starts and the entire crowd just erupted. It's a fantastic song. I think it's perfect. Yes. All right. How about you, Mike? I'm going to say yes. Um, I don't really have much to add. A lot of songs in this particular genre are, are are kind of dismissed. A lot of times, I think this this one, is, especially for me, has so many layers to it. Um, it, the the fact that it you can listen to it now and it doesn't even sound like it's you know, a 25 year old song. It just sounds like something that would come out now. Right. It's, it's, it's one of those timeless kind of songs for me. I, so I can listen totally, to it any time. Yeah. It totally passes the Mike timelessness test, right? It do, it did. <laughs> it did. And I agree. It totally does. I mean, the fact that I had to, like you just asked and I was like, what year, what year was this? Cause it could have been, can be any year. It could mm-hmm. be this year, quite honestly. Oh yeah. It's still, it still works on the same way it worked when it came out. Um, and that, and I do think that's that's a, a point, uh, a point towards being perfect. And uh, so Mike said yes, Alan said yes. I am also saying yes. Um, I can hear the song over and over at any time, and I'll listen to it and I'll enjoy it, uh, and I'll bother people and tell them you should you should listen to this song. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll say in the car, I'll say, "Hey, sweetie," to my wife. It's a good song, huh? And she's like, yeah, it's fine. I've been talking about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I say yes, perfect song. Uh, so we have ourselves a unanimous decision. Um, <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding. There'll, there'll be the turkey sound. Um, yeah, La Tigre. Yeah, we could do more. We should, I'd love to talk more about the band itself and the whole, and, and maybe Kathleen Hanna show or something. The whole, it's very, yeah. 
Yeah. Kathleen Hanna is my hero. So yeah. I would yeah, I'd love to do a show about her. All right. Maybe we'll do that. We haven't done a show that talks about an artist other than ranking albums. So this would be a nice one to do like an artist through different bands and uh but we'll figure it yeah. out, folks, and we'll bring it to you in marvelous stereo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you, Mike, Al. Say bye bye. Bye. See you later. <laughs> nice. Thank you for listening to this Gen Explainers podcast. Follow us on Instagram and friend us on Facebook. Just search for Gen Explainers and find us on Patreon, where you can support the channel and gain access to extended cuts of the podcast as well as exclusive bonus content. See you next time. Now, now, which one's Tigra? Which one's Bunny in the band? Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, you should have <laughs> saved it. That's gold. Come on. Why do you? <laughs> Why do you save the joke for after the recording? I'm still recording, buddy. I got it. See you later.